Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sandeep Sharma and I welcome you to this interview where we have Dr. Pragya Chaurasia with us. Dr. Pragya has just got a stupendous performance. She has got a rank of a combined merit list rank of 7 and AIMS merit list rank of 9 in the INI SS DM Neonatology November 22 exam. So Dr. Pragya, we welcome you to this interview and congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. It would have been impossible without you and your team, sir. Thank you so much for supporting from every step. It's a it's a pleasure to know that. Uh, Dr. Pragya, uh, first of all, how are you feeling right now? Feeling sink or you're still trying to come to terms? No, sir, I'm feeling extremely, extremely grateful, sir. Now, right now, like I have just secured a seat in DM neonatology seat and that is on in aims that is that is huge for me even i never thought of this uh this seat in aims only i was uh, i was expecting somewhere between the uh, lucknow and kolkata and then i got aims now i can get i got a aims See, end of the day, uh, most colleges are good, but end of the uh, see the branding of aims, the quality of aims. I don't think anything can get bigger than this, right? So, uh, first of all, uh, tell me about your uh, background, where you belong to, from where you did your G and PG. Uh, sir, I belong to Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh, and have done my MBBS from Calcutta National Medical College, Kolkata, and MD from MGM Medical College, Indore. Okay. And this was my first attempt, sir. You have given INISS, uh, NEET SS also, uh, before this INISS? Yes, sir. And yes, sir. I got the rank of 147 in NEET SS 2022 September. And from 147, within a few months, Two now you are into the top 10 in the entire country in INISS. So, excellent, excellent. Yes, sir. So, uh, since you have given both the exams, uh, students who are listening to this, students who are listening to this would be interested in knowing, uh, like, obviously, there is a difference in the paper pattern and the weightage of the subject. It is a more speciality based paper in INISS. But apart from that, what were the, uh, which was the most difficult, more difficult paper according to you? And what were the similarities between the two papers? And how would you, you know, if you have to compare the two papers side by side, what's your opinion on that? Uh, sir, it is more about the interest. If you are interested in some subject, like I am inter I was interested in, in, in neonatology, so I would connectly link to that subject. And uh, that uh, NEET SS, it is unpredictable. Last I heard heard of, about from my seniors that last year question paper out of hundred question they have asked 24 25 question uh, from uh, nephrology itself mm -hmm. and this time only 30 40 question just from neurology mm -hmm. and that is really unpredictable next year what they will do no one can predict mm -hmm. so obviously the student who uh, prepare neurology get more chance to get selected uh, in need assist and that is of INISS, that is predictable. You you are appearing on the subject that you are interested in it. Mm -hmm. And you have opt for that subject only. You have not forced to read that subject. You, uh, you are interested, you are you have opted for it and you are giving exam. And out of 80 questions, they, they ask 40 to 45 questions from uh, neurotology itself. And uh, rest of it also that uh, rest like uh, like uh, any uh, any of uh, system they will ask more of uh, neonatology or infant based things. Mm -hmm. They will not ask about pediatrics. Very few question is from the pediatrics. And uh, apart from that, you have uh, to prepare uh, for INISS itself. You have to prepare ventilator biostats they ask uh, uh, this time only they ask five question from ventilator one to two calculation of abg has been asked every time in the aims this time also there was one to two question was there biostat was a little bit unpredictable um i um, i left that question of biostats two to three question i left that question like i can't do biostats it's okay it's fine it's fine eventually you will have to do biostats again when you uh, prepare your dissertation or thesis later, SS thesis. But uh, yes, the point is uh, well taken. So uh, what were the textbooks, resources that you used specifically for INISS? Uh, 
uh, for INISs, I have used uh, AIMS protocol. I have read multiple time of AIMS protocol and then Prohati. Uh, I read, uh, th uh, read line to line to Prohati. I, I stick to Prohati at the end of, even in the interview also, I stick to the Prohati and AIMS protocol. Simultaneously, I used to read uh, frequently, just like if I'm reading AIMS protocol uh, neurology, then I, I, I read the neurology from Prohati itself. That will cover whole of the syllables only. And uh, something uh, uh, I have also read Ames uh, Nelson uh, uh, neurology part. Uh, some uh, uh, some uh, tables and some uh, uh, pictures are only given in uh, Nelson. N neither the Ames protocol has an any uh, picture based uh, thing, and neither the Ekluhati has any picture based thing. And uh, Ames uh, people will ask the picture based thing that this time also they have given. ROP picture, um, uh, NEC picture, they have uh, given pictorial based question uh, only. So the questions were majorly clinical. So, uh, that I the yes, sir. The question were only, the, sir, yes, sir. The question, all the question were clinical based. There was no question uh, uh, th that was directly. So uh, apart from that, uh, Dr. Pragya, also tell us about you just talked about the interview part. So departmental assessment. What were the like kind of questions asked to you, and what are the what is the advice you would give to future people who are targeting the departmental assessment of AIMS? Yes, the departmental assessment has been conducted in two parts. First part was morning session that will that will be based on neurology itself, and second part this afternoon session was based on the pediatric. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, specifically, uh, one can prepare for the first part that is neurology itself. They start. They give a uh, ten question, and in that ten question, they have given the sub uh, uh, sub part of that question. So in one question, you have to answer uh, two to four question, mm -hmm. and they have started asking from pre prenatology. Uh, uh, question number one was the prenatology based question, and then uh, frequently they uh, ask BPD, they ask uh, ABG, and they ask ROP, and uh, lastly uh, the question was there uh, uh, on the uh, examination of the newborn and the last question was on uh, that uh, angle and uh, Milson uh, uh, popliteal angle and uh, this type of question were asked in the departmental assessment and second half was uh, more like uh, uh, one person from the uh, pulmonol pulmonology department they have asked one question about the cystic fibrosis uh, and one one from the dm uh, one from the neurology department uh, they have asked something about uh, 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 neuromuscular congenital neuromuscular disorders and uh, 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 one from the nephrologist i think uh, uh, he has uh, he asked me about uh, the uh, condition they, uh, he has uh, me one condition and uh, ask me about the degree of that uh, condition and uh, one question is from again from the biostats okay 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 so uh, basically uh, the, it is it is a two part system so people who are targeting exams so yes. the second part assessment is also very important so uh, in that part yes. as dr pragya just said just to summarize there is a morning part which is the speciality part and in the evening it is a broad speciality general part where other things related to other than the speciality will also be asked to you so questions obviously will vary from person to person and uh, so uh, biostats uh, there were two to three questions as you said but despite leaving them I think they were tough only, so it did not make much of a difference to your rank. Yeah. But yes, uh, biostats is uh, frequently asked in the uh, entrance exam. So the yeah, INISS, that is one additional thing that needs to be done. So Dr. Pragya, uh, when did you actually decide that you will be targeting the super speciality exam? Was it during MD or you decided like uh, after you completed your MD that, okay, now I should sit in the exam? What was that time the you uh you started preparing? Sir, I have enrolled uh, the prep ladder app in the month of April 2022, this year only. And from that, I uh, prepared slightly uh, about the, look, I was not uh, truly dedicated to this. And once I got over from my MD, uh, I got a one month um, uh, period to prepare for MD examination and off from off the duty. And then I uh, rigorously prepared for uh, neat SS. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the neat SS, uh, the rank was not so good. And uh, I was not uh, satisfied with DNB and uh, the, uh, going to South. So I decided to uh, appear again in uh, INISS. Then I got the star. 
Uh, so what what extra did you do which actually helped in improving your rank compared to the previous exam which you gave? What additional things you you uh, you did right? Sir, uh, from the first day itself, I was interested in neonatology and I use I used to study Kruharty in protocol. Mm-hmm. Even in my third year, I uh, got a uh, an NNF quiz, a zonal level with a, uh, zonal level quiz. I got a um, first rank there only, and from that, it was a base was set, and I have to only revise the thing. So I stick uh, during the one and half month that I got after need assess, mm-hmm. I was stick on my basic books like Kloharty. Ames protocol and uh, an extra thing I have done with uh, is Nelson. Uh, Nelson was not covered in my uh, neat SS examination, uh, neurotology parts per se. And extra thing is I have given uh, one to two day for uh, ventilator and then uh, ABGs and then uh, biostats, uh, uh, biostats. And after that, apart from this, uh, half of my day was dedicated for, for neurotology. And half of my day was dedicated to the uh, general uh, pediatric, general pediatrics or systemic pediatrics. Great. So, uh, if somebody is just joining in MD now or D- DNB right now in pediatrics, first year students, uh, and somebody wants to prepare, uh, what, how, what are the areas you feel you would advise that can help them in cracking the exam within their first attempt itself? Any suggestions from your end? Like if you are going into MD, yes, your your uh, younger self, what would you give the advice? Yes, sir. Uh, sir uh, firstly, be stick to your words and uh, observe the patient, and then uh, go to the, your uh, basic books like Nelson. Mm-hmm. Nelson is must to do, and whenever you are posted in, like you are posted in NICU, try to cover AIMS protocol in the first year. And then Prohati in the second year, and then then up in third year, get go and analyze the patient. Why the patient having hypoglycemia? Why the patient is having AKI? Just just go through, find the reason, and if you find the reason, then you see the treatment per se. And if you correlate this thing, you will never forget it in future part. If you just study from the books, you will forget every time. And same uh, is for uh, the pediatric uh, part. Uh, same is for pediatric part. Mm-hmm. Read Nelson. Do not jump to Ghai. Don't know. There is no need to read Ghai. Like you can crack any exam. Even even in my MD examination, when everybody was uh, b- behind the Ghai, I was not. Uh, I have never touched the Ghai. I have given my MD exam from Nelson itself, sir. Hmm. Correct. Correct. So very apt, appropriate advice given by uh, Dr. Pragya. So uh, the Indian author books, we are not saying they are bad. Yes, they are needed, sometimes needed for no. writing the paper. But if you start reading them from the beginning of your MD, uh, I think you lose out precious time where you can build concepts on standard books like Nelson, etc. So I think those books are important and you should be focusing your energy towards doing them. So Dr. Pragya, uh, did you read every also? like? There is a school of thought which says every no, sir. Is needed. No, no, no time was no, there. Sir, no, sir. Right, right, right. No, sir. Never, never. <laughs> never, ever. Okay. Uh, and and obviously no journals also because you are very fresh from doing your MD, right? Yes. 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 Great, great, great. So yes. I think uh, there is no need to read any journal. I think uh, there is, people are behind the journal, but um, I don't think so. There is any need to read journal. You will you stick to your basic books that will give you your rank. What rank you want that will give you your rank. Even in NEET SS also and in INISS, none of the question were from recent journal and anything. you can correlate if you uh, read uh, if you have a basic concept was clear, then you can correlate at that in the exam. You have to you have a four option with you. You have to rule out each and every option. There is. But was every hundred percent of the exam. Even the rank one was rank one didn't know hundred percent of the exam. You have to at at the at the time of the exam when you, the question was in front of you, just go and see. If you don't know about the question itself, just read the option first and just rule out key whether this option suit or this option not suit. And in the in that case, you you will get twenty five question, thirty question correct in that manner only, sir. 
Correct, correct, correct. So very useful advice given by Dr. Pragya. And Dr. Pragya, uh, was the paper, uh, did you find any problems related to time management or it was you were able to finish the uh, paper in time, the INISS paper? Uh, sir, INISS paper, um, I uh, finished on the time, but there is no time to uh, go back to and see uh, the previous question. So just, uh, just uh, one minute or two minutes before, I just completed my paper. And then I have gone to two to three questions and then uh, time was off. So. Great, great, great. And uh, lastly, uh, Dr. Pragya, uh, any any uh, dedication you want to give? Uh, obviously, uh, if you have achieved great success, it cannot be a single person's endeavor. Obviously, it is your hard work. But it is also many people in the back background. So your family, your friends, your teachers, if you want to dedicate it to anyone. Yes, sir. I want to dedicate this to my father and mother and my brother and uh, one of when few of my friends, um, the, sir, we started our journey together. Uh, Dr. Apurva Gupta and Dr. Gagandeep Shukla and uh, Dr. Prachiti, ma'am, and uh, one of my friends who always supported me every, every time, Dr. Manish Gupta, sir, every, without these people, it would never be possible, sir, and all of my teachers. So you of uh, my departmental teachers, all the teachers were just awesome. The, in in our college, the rounds were so hectic. Or I mean, what can I say, sir? Uh, we used to overnight. We used to uh, keep a paper and pen. He what can be done to this case and what what happened to this case. And from that, I have learned uh, the to crack this this clinical examination. And uh, that is the, like uh, for that I I want to thank thank to my department, sir. Great, great, great. And uh, did did you in the end did you find prep ladder to be of some use? Did you utilize the yes, sir. Uh, Q banks and resources? Yes, sir. I have done all the Q banks. I have seen uh, videos, uh, lectures of the uh, unit uh, neonatology and systemic pediatric was covered so beautifully in this app. And uh, sir, uh, in, in neurotology part per se is also covered nicely in the question. Lovely talking with you, Dr. Pragya. Your you had such clear thoughts and you give such good information to all the future aspirants. I hope everyone will benefit from it. And congratulations to you, your dad, your mom, your brother, your friends, your teachers, everyone. And uh, it was lovely talking with you. All the very best <laughs> for a great future. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Bye bye.